Today's blog topic is seat belts, and specifically the failure to wear a seat belt and how that plays out in a personal injury lawsuit. First, let me go on record as the Massachusetts Academy of Trial Attorneys has and greatly advocate the use of seat belts. It is one thing that we can all do to help enhance our safety. But often I, I am faced with clients who are in serious motor vehicle accidents who have not at the particular time had a seat belt on. And what is my posture, what is my response when that fact is pointed out by an insurance company or a defense attorney? I steadfastly maintain that the failure to use a seat belt cannot be admitted in evidence in a civil action, i.e. a personal injury action. I've successfully kept that information out or that evidence out in numerous civil cases and not only in trials but in arbitrations. Now the seatbelt statute, Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 90, Section 13A, that is the seatbelt statute and that requires the use of a seatbelt subject to certain exceptions. And it does not say, as often uh, it is thought, that failure to wear a seatbelt cannot come in evidence in a civil action. However, based on my experience, the statute has been construed as or interpreted as not permitting its use in a civil case. Now there is, that's a statute, but there is case law that spoke in some way on this issue, and that was from a 1992 case of the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court. That case, known as Shadazi, uh, the defendant wanted to say, well, we're not introducing the failure to wear a seat belt for comparative negligence. We're introducing it to show that it had a causal effect on the plaintiff's injuries. But the court, in noting that there was no expert testimony, did not permit that evidence or information to come in. The, uh, Supreme Judicial Court stated, the defendant in this case has failed to produce any evidence that the plaintiff's failure to wear her seatbelt was causally related to her injuries. In the absence of any such evidence, the judge properly refused to submit the issue to the jury, as the jury would have been left to speculate as to whether the plaintiff's failure to wear her seatbelt contributed to her injuries. In prior blogs, I've spoken about the evils of speculation. And you can see the court's mindset here when they use the word speculation. In the absence of an expert test or of expert testimony, the trial judge is instructed by the higher courts not to admit evidence of a failure to wear a seatbelt. Now again, that's on the plaintiff's damages, but also on something known as comparative negligence. Your attorney in your auto accident case should never allow, without the most strenuous objection possible, a defendant to come to the courthouse to say that the defendant, that the plaintiff should have worn a seatbelt. And I will say that there are other statutes under Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 90 that make or set out certain requirements uh, for driving. And in those statutes, by their explicit terms, they speak to the failure to observe this or that statute is evidence of negligence. And what they're saying, the legislature is saying, is that that can come in evidence at a trial. But there is no such language in the seatbelt statute. Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 90, Section 13A. Thank you.